Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Jeremiah here. I just wanted to take a quick moment today to talk about focus rate control and how I use it alongside my Axe FX2 to run all the audio on my computer and in Studio One. So let's go ahead and take a look here on my desktop. I got focus rate control open already. And if we go ahead and open the settings, you can see that I'm running a Scarlet 18i20, the second generation. So you can see I'm running 48 kilohertz. I run this just on everything. Um, my Focusrite is set up, my Axe Effect set up for that, and Studio One obviously is all everything set up for that. Internal clock source, and I'm using my mon monitor controllers for one through four. Uh, I have two sets of monitors, so that's why I had that set up. I'm not even using the secondary set right now, um, so it doesn't really matter. You can just do whatever you want there. But those are the settings. So yeah, we're running 48 kilohertz on everything, and you can see... When I turn up my monitor control, you can see that monitors outputs one through four, these two right there are going up and down these two. So uh, first one on my Yamaha HS8s, of course, and the other ones I'm not really using anyways. So, okay, on everything I'm running right now, you can see these pretty much stay the same other than for this line outputs five through six. I had that set up to run some playback if I needed to, but everything else is going to be exactly the same. Other than you'll notice that seven and eight and nine and 10 are both headphone outputs. So I had these ones set up for my friend David and had these ones set up for me. And right now I have my Axe FX muted because I, we are using that through voice meter. So um, if I go ahead and play my guitar right now should be able to hear that i'm hearing that through voice meter uh everything's just a little bit different since we have to use that to route all the audio to make this video but other than that all this stuff i'm going to show you is going to hold true and you guys can pretty much just emulate this okay so let's take a look at our hardware inputs we have playback left and right uh just one and two i'm physically running that in and out that doesn't matter too much right now so actually we could probably just close those and i'll go ahead and open that back up later so what's important for this video is we have my mic vocals going through our analog input three and we have our axe effects going into inputs seven and eight doesn't matter which inputs you guys use um, if you want to use one and two, like many people do who are guitarists like me, especially, you know, self-recording guitarists, uh, doesn't really matter. Just go ahead and emulate this exact same setup. You can see I have this set to minus eight decibels where our playback is set to minus six decibels. The reason I set the playback to minus six and the Axe FX to minus eight is because usually... I need the music to be slightly louder, like if I'm just playing on YouTube with something like, let's say, you know, we had this video that we did and let me grab my guitar. We are using the axe effects going directly into our interface via analog and if you have your playback set at let's say zero um that's fine if you're just doing playback but as soon as you start running some inputs and other noises you're going to clip you're just going to notice that you start to clip and that's when you see like a red dot you know that little red square on uh, either side uh, where the left and right side of this channel for your playback or you'll see it also on your actual outputs so like I said, everything here is the same. I have my mic muted for my outputs for the Yamahas. That way there's no feedback, but on the headphones, we have the mic going through so I can hear myself. But like I said, on mine, right now I'm muting the uh, Axe FX. Normally I would have this unmuted and that's how I would run everything. I also have a input set up via SPDIF, which is going to be input 11 and 12. If you go over to add, you can see one and two or one and two for spitif, but you can tell that that's going to be, sorry, I said 11 and 12. I meant nine and 10 because it's going to follow your analog inputs directly. So you're going to have analog inputs one through eight for the 18i20. So if you don't have an 18i20, then this isn't going to be exactly the same. If you have like a 2i2, you probably don't have spitif on those. Um, but as long as you have an interface that has the spitif inputs that I'm using, then you can go ahead and just run one 
Uh, you don't need both. You can just use just the left channel, just the first channel, and run your DI through that. And that's what all I'm that's all I'm using it for. I have that muted so you don't hear the DI. And if we take a look at the axe effects, I'll show you how I'm running that DI. Go ahead and go to your IO settings and page over to audio. You can see that my main input source is my analog input, just like it normally would be. The word clock is set to auto, so that's going to connect to the focus rate. And SPDIF or AES is set to SPDIF, of course. And then we want to go down to our output to echo. Output to echo is going to be output one. And then that's just so you can run to um, if you're running an analog DI out, then you would set this to, let me go back. Sorry. You would set that to input one, but since we are doing a SPDIF output for a DI, we're going to set this USB digi output source to the input. That's how I'm getting my DI through the SPDIF. So it's a digital DI. I'm not using a DI box in this case or a reamp box because I'm just using the SPDIF to send a DI signal into Studio One to record it. And then if I want to reamp, I have a specific bus for my DIs that I will route just the DIs through and send that back to the interface, or sorry, back to my Axe Effects. And then when we go back up to our input on the Axe Effects, we can change that to SPDIF when we want to reamp, and it would take that outgoing source from Studio One and take that into the Axe Effects, and then we can re-record the reamp that way. And the way I have that set up is by using our SPDIF outputs, which I have just SPDIF 1 right here, is going to be software playback 11. That's what you're going to be using for your SPDIF. And that's going to be outputting to SPDIF output 1. That's going to be what we use to reamp. So in this case, that's what I'm using because 11 comes directly after outputs 9 and 10. And that's why I said 11 and 12 on accident earlier when I was talking about our inputs, because you have eight in eight inputs, and then the ninth and tenth are your SPDIF inputs. So that's how I have my SPDIF set up. And that's pretty much all you guys need to know on how I use Focusrite Control to run my Axe Effects and record everything. Um, Obviously, you can play around with the levers and everything. That doesn't matter too much. I just found that to make sure nothing is ever clipping, I really like to just set my playback to minus six decibels. And then if I need to turn my XVEX up or down here, I just do that as needed. Sometimes when I'm recording in Studio One, I'm actually running it at minus 12. If I'm playing along uh, to something like on Spotify or on YouTube, um, like I just showed you a little bit ago, then usually I'm running at like minus eight, uh, just cause I, you, you know, I noticed that if I'm running at the same volume, it's usually a little too loud. You could turn down your output in the ax effects or on your actual output knob, but I like to run my output knob on the ax effects all the way up. And then I have everything set. So nothing's clipping on the way out, of course, on the ax effects. And I just run this usually at minus eight, but that's pretty much all I have for you today. So let's go ahead and come back to the camera. So again, guys, thanks for watching. I made this video in part to answer a question from a subscriber, Dunder Noodle, who left a comment asking about how to set up focus right control, especially with the Axe Vex, and he asked if maybe I could make a video on it. So uh, I know it's been a little while, but I finally got around to it now that I got this new camera set up and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you found this helpful. Share it with people who also use a focus right. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the notification bell on so you can be notified every time I put out a new video. You've been awesome. Thanks for watching.